What's up, everybody? My name is Makai McCraven. I'm a drummer and producer, and I'm here to show you a couple ways I found my own sound and some of my influences in my musical journey. I grew up in a musical household, so there was always instruments and music all over the place. My father's a drummer and would always have his drum set set up in the living room for rehearsals. And I would go and hide in there in the bass room when I was a little kid. And my mother, uh, who sings and plays mandolin and piano and is a music teacher uh, from Hungary, does Eastern European folk music. And so there was always like a lot of different styles in the house plus my own interest in hip hop and reggae, Afrobeat, electronic music, and, and really anything that I could get my hands on. And you know, for me, in the development of my sound, being diverse and having a diverse palette to draw from has been uh, one of the most important things for my sound and the development of that sound. And so, you know, I always encourage musicians to really follow the music that inspires them, you know? And so as a drummer, listen to, the, listen to your, favorite, your favorite music that really inspires you and start there when you want to uh, look for inspiration. And there is always going to be more and more things to study and to uncover. Now the drums are a really special instrument because to me, they really have been at the forefront of all major changes in, in music. So growing up in this musical household and checking all different styles, you know, my main interest in the drums has been in into rhythm and pulse and grooves and how different grooves and feels affect the music and the direction of the music. One of the most important things that, was, that I was taught in my house from my parents was the importance of finding your sound as a player. And that's, you know, really a personal experience for all of us uh, to, to find the things that will re resonate with us and that we want to study and we want to learn and we want to expound on. And so I'd like to take you on a quick journey on some techniques that I've used in developing my sound over the years. My main influences have always been the game changers. You know, the drummers that broke the rules and really developed their own distinct sound that was undeniable. My favorite drummers and musicians in general in this music are musicians with a distinctive stamp that when I hear them, you know, without any visual cue, I, I can automatically pick them out. And, you know, what's really special about these musicians is that the way that they fit in the continuum of music, that they really have embodied the history that came before them, but really were able to propel the music in a new direction despite, you know, what the, the, uh, the current landscape was. And so some of these drummers, you know, for me, are guys like Elvin Jones, who really opened up the drum set from just being the rhythm and the timekeeper, but to really be an expressive, expressive palette of colors, sounds, and emotions that can come out of the instrument. 
And one of the ways that Elvin did that was the way that he utilized the triplet and put it into everything he did. You can see the influence of Elvin Jones from Mitch Mitchell with Jimi Hendrix uh, to almost all contemporary jazz drummers and the way we utilize triplets and triplet variations. One way to kind of put your imprint or your sound into the music is to start with a you know, basic groove, right? Let's say like a swing pattern. And we're gonna open this up into a feel a la Elvin Jones utilizing the triplet. So, you know, where we would might start with just a basic feel like this. By adding triplets and motion and some dialogue and rhythm, it takes a simple pattern and brings it to life. You know, and for many people when, you know, that started to be introduced in the music, it was too busy or cacophonous or too much. But because of the way that he was able to bring his own flavor in, into the music and do it his way, it really made a, a large impact on the way that we hear and play the music from this point on. Tony Williams, one of the most influential drummers of all time. You know, one of the amazing things about Tony Williams is that he really was introduced to the professional music scene at a very young age. He was just a teenager, he was a, a, a prodigy, and, um, and Miles Davis picked him up in his band uh, in, his, in his teens, maybe 16, 17 years old. One of the things I, I really love about young musicians is their lack of inhibitions. And with Tony, he had developed such a high level of technicality at a young age um, that mixing that with his lack of inhibitions of, as a player, he was an incredible risk taker. And there were some key things that he did in his, in his early, early years that really revolutionized uh, the way that we approach the drums and, and swing. And one of those things was, you know, when, where Elvin was really over accentuating triplets and you, utilizing that, you know, often Tony Williams was straightening out his ride feel and his swing beat to give this uh, straight eighth type feel and playing his hi-hat on all fours. And that was a kind of a big influence for me um, at, at a certain period of my playing um, to start utilizing my hi-hat as um, not as just a timekeeper on two and four, but then as this much more fluid extension to what I can do. Um, and so like an example of how, you know, Tony might, might do something with a, a swing feel would be like this. A big part of my sound has been the influence of, of hip hop and particularly sample based hip hop. You know, I spent a lot of time listening to different beats and trying to emulate the, the drum breaks. And what's interesting about that for me is that often the drum breaks to your favorite hip hop tunes or sample, particularly sample based stuff are going to be breaks that have been sampled from old jazz records or old funk records. And so for me, like 
part of my study of hip hop has really led me down a study of funk drumming and as well as jazz drumming and how the timbres of those sounds when sampled and, and recontextualized create the sound that we, we know as, as, a, as a hip hop sounding sample or something like that. One of the defining characteristics of a sample, whether it's a sample or whether it's a drum machine, one of the defining characteristics is the consistency of sound, you know? And so for me, learning to play hip hop or emulate electronic sounds, which are essentially also emulating organic sounds, is still playing the organic sounds, but finding ways to drive in consistency of sound and timbre to emulate the, elect the electronics, which are going to be completely consistent. And so for me, things like really clean and clear sound uh, on each instrument that you strike and having a very acute sense of dynamic and sound when approaching those because now we are humans emulating a computer, essentially. Um, and so I would say there are a handful of drummers, you know, that have really set kind of uh, set a bar for that and were main influences for me when I was younger and trying to understand how to emulate those sounds or how to even start to approach uh, a hip hop feel and make it sound different maybe than like a, just a generic funk feel or whatever. And those are people like um, Questlove, Amir Thompson, or uh, Chris Dave would be to people I would name. Amir, I really was influenced by his dedication to articulation and consistency of feel, right? Which is a choice to play the same thing over and over clearly, you know, not necessarily a technical ability. To Chris Dave, who then has kind of taken taken uh, understanding of breaks and break beats and, and hip hop feels, and then really expanded on the technical side by deconstructing a lot of those elements uh, using a, a whole bunch of really like, uh, creative techniques and creative sound sources as well as uh, chops, so to speak. I would say my sound as a drummer really comes from the influence of, of these game changer drummers, and my father included, as well as, um, you know, learning about like advanced rhythm through different styles. And like, for instance, through my mother and Hungarian folk music, as well as you know, investigations into, you know, West African uh, polyrhythm and 12 eights, as well as Moroccan music and Indian music and, and everything around me, you know? And so everything uh, com comes back to, you know, my love of rhythm and the beat and the pulse and finding different ways to interpret that. And that's kind of led me to want to pull back as many layers as I can and get into not only what's a good groove, but let's but talk about syncop syncopation, poly meter, and, and mixed meters and, and odd meters. And, and all these different offshoots of rhythm have really 
been um, the things that have driven my study as a percussionist. Whenever I look at rhythm, you know, I like to look back to the roots. And when it comes to odd meter music, you know, my mother taught me how to play odd meter at a young age using Hungarian folk songs. And rather than it being some sort of intellectual exercise where I had to, you know, you're gonna to count to seven or you have to really like make it some sort of advanced thing, we would always break it down to more of a feeling of a dance and it's something that you can put in your body. So she would say, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. And that would be a seven, which is two shorts and a long, which are two sets of two and one set of three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two. Short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. And, and so I find that when you take rhythm and you put it into a, a, a the, feel, the, the sound of a, of a pattern, a clave, or a dance, something you can feel in your body, short, short, long, short, short, long, short, short, long. It makes it all of a sudden something that's much easier to play along with or to understand for even the layman. You don't have to be super trained to be playing seven, five, nine, or 11, which would be short, 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 long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. And so um, that is one way that I look at mixed meters and, and multimeters and odd meters in, by putting them into shapes that are, I can find recognizable and then I interpret them through that. And so I, I've been developing through these building blocks my own sets of, of, of beats that I feel like translate to, 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 the, to the average listener but, but are utilizing these polyrhythms. So like for instance a seven would be short, short, long, short, short, long. Short, short, long. This is an example of, uh, this is a, 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 mixed, a mixed meter, right? So it's gonna be five in the bottom against three on top, right? Which is a polyrhythm uh, rather than a multimeter, which would be maybe two, two different meters next to each other. These are two meters on top of each other. Five, five against three. One of the ways that I think about this, right, is, is I keep, the five pulse going on, on the, in my head or, or played by an instrument somewhere, uh, maybe the bass drum. And then I use a clave, right, which is my three against five pattern, which is in the triplet, three sets of five. So it's a pattern, a clave that takes three sets of five groupings and turns it into a rhythm and using the rhythm, then I can more easily hear how the two time signatures relate. So here's my, here's my clave.
My sound is really a result of being open to follow the passion and the information that's around that's around and and then when it's time to to like give your output then not to be afraid to to play what you what you've learned and what you feel and it's a and it's a, it's a combination of you know looking to the past you know so you can so we can step into the future and and that that's a that that is um to me is is the is the the balancing act of of uh studying this music thank you guys for joining me on this journey i wish you the best of luck developing your own sound bringing in all your influences and being your own game changer thank you so much see you next time peace Yeah. <laughs>